Hi everyone, Sean O'Connor here from Mirror Geoscience, and I'm going to show you how I create a 3D fault network in GoCad Mining Suite. So today we're going to start with a 2D magnetic data set. Obviously, this is a really nice uh, layered fabric with some intrusions and different things going on in, uh, in our key and greenstone belt here. Beautiful data set. And what we're going to go through do and do first is interpret a, um, a 2D fault network. So we've roughed in some curves here where we think there's different structures. And the first thing we're gonna go through and do is, is make the major surfaces um, as just roughed in surfaces here based on different information we have available. So the um, inversion products and, and drilling and whatever else. So we started with some big major surfaces, but but we also have all these little minor ones as well. And, and I want those to end up in the fault network. I want to be able to represent those properly in 3D. So now we're going to go through and make all these little minor ones and make sure we we kind of honor the cross cutting relationships I've represented in 2D. So um, what I'm going to do is go through and and look at a cross section through each one of these little structures in my 3D inversion here. I'm using the arbitrary slicer tool, which is this one over here. Um, to cut a section through the unconstrained magnetic inversion. And I'm going and looking perpendicular to each one of those interpreted faults that I have. And I'm going to go look and see if I'm seeing any breaks corresponding to that fault and whether we can see a dip. And what I'm going to do is go through and tabulate those in. Um, in a table that looks just like this, OK, and uh, and I'm going to go through and write down the part number of each one of these curves. So I've got all these different parts that I've made from that initial starting network. And I'm going to interpret its dip direction and its dip right down in the table here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a macro to, um, to, to generate a bunch of really coarse starting surfaces there. So I'll just go through. I'll pick my macro out of the list here. I'm going to build the faults surfaces from interpreted dips. We run this through and we end up with something that looks just like this. Um, you know, so some really coarse surfaces, obviously all these do, all that macro does is takes those curves and projects them by the dip and dip azimuth that I interpreted for the fault. And we end up with this big mess, which is great because this is a good jumping off point. So now what I'm going to do is open up the, um, the, the SCUA fault network utility here, the structure and stratigraphy workflow, and build myself a fault network from those starting surfaces. OK, so now I end up with this fault network that looks like this. It's clipped to my volume of interest, which looks a little bit better, but we still have these relationships where we have faults crossing over each other. or They're not extending long enough at depth. You see, we have this kind of missing triangle here. So now what we're going to go through and do is correct those relationships. So. I'm looking at an individual little minor structure here that's occurring between two bigger ones. And what we what we have in 2D is we kind of want to show this being truncated by this black one and these big blue ones. We don't want it to be crossing them, but we also don't want to have this gap down here. So I'll go back to my fault editor view. This is fault well, part 47. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that contact. Um, and that's set with the scaling parameter here relative to the input data. The input data is just a roughed in surface. So I'm going to rebuild the fault. Now it's OK, great. It's extending where it needs to extend to, but it's still a little bit too big. So what we'll go through and do is go to change the relationships here. So this is all being recorded internal to this school workflow. And so we're able to regenerate this dynamically when we make some changes, say, to the input surface. If I decide I want to change the azimuth and dip later, I'm going to go through and hit set branching here. Click on that. Click on that. And so now we're reflecting those branching relationships. And I'm not going to keep that. I'm going to make a cut here. There we go. And so now we have this fault reflecting the, the interpretation of that original 2D data. And we've made more of a watertight and nice looking fault network that we can use for um, for all sorts of stuff. And this is what the final product looks like. So again, very busy, but now we've ended up with um, we've ended up with this sort of uh, sealed up fault network that looks the way we want it to, and we're able to proceed and use that with uh, with other data sets to do some exploration. So here it is cut sliced into the mag. It's a restrict mode. And you see we've reflected that 2D interpretation 
and it's all stored dynamically so we can generate this again if we want to. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.